The state Labor government's plans to revitalise the dying heart of Newcastle went well and truly off track this week when the developer behind a mega redevelopment of the city's CBD pulled the plug on the project. The GPT company had been planning to transform Newcastle with a massive commercial and residential development spanning three city blocks. The stumbling block, however, was the controversial condition GPT had put on the plans. It wanted a commitment from the state government that it would rip up the heavy railway line running into the heart of the city. As state line has reported previously, critics of the railway line blame it for splitting central Newcastle into two and stifling the rebirth of the city. GPT's decision has devastated Newcastle, along with the news that flagship retailer David Jones intends to shut up shop as a result. This week, the Keneally government was desperately trying to spin its way out of trouble, claiming it's prepared to look at a light rail solution. But that wasn't good enough for the development company, which has taken its money and walked. Nick Grimm takes a look. For more than 150 years, trains have been trundling into the centre of Newcastle, bringing travellers to the historic railway station located in the heart of the city's central business district. I just feel that the, um, the rail line, the way it's been, and I've felt this for many years, is uh, actually uh, inhibiting the growth and popularity of the city of Newcastle. Yes, that's so, but I do think that if they take it away, they will regret it later on. Stateline asked locals last year whether the rail line should be ripped up and removed. Yeah, I've travelled to uh, Newcastle from Sydney by train and by the time it gets to Newcastle Station, you've only got about half a dozen people who are getting off the train. I think it's preposterous. I think the old people need the trains. Newcastle has been a city divided, split along both ideological and railway lines. For a lot of people, that's the problem. The train tracks form a physical barrier cutting one part of the city off from the other. They reckon the line has been choking the life out of Newcastle's dying heart. Twelve months ago, State Line was shown what, for many locals, has come to epitomise the decline of the city's CBD. Newcastle's old post office building, still lying empty years after being sold off to a Sydney developer. It's been sitting here now for almost 10 years uh, with nothing being done to it, apart from, as you can see, graffiti and... Uh, neglect. And, and neglect. The signs of decay are everywhere to be seen in the once bustling CBD. There was a time when Newcastle's central retail precinct was a magnet that drew visitors to the city from regions far and wide for a day of shopping in town. But like a lot of other places, Newcastle saw its commercial activity move away from the traditional main street trading zones to large air-conditioned shopping malls and such like. At least there's been no shortage of proposed solutions to the problem. One of the most innovative is called Renew Newcastle. It's seen empty shop spaces given rent-free to artists and other creative people with an interesting business concept. One of the big problems has been that Newcastle tends to be looking for a big scale solution, whether that's about removing the rail line or a single development of any kind or, or whatever, and that that is magically going to transform things. Even so, the city's business community has been pinning hopes on development company General Property Trust, or GPT, proceeding with plans for a major redevelopment of the CBD. But GPT made it clear it had one substantial prerequisite, it wanted the state government to remove the city's rail line first. If the New South Wales government does that, then you will have a large company bringing $650 million into the inner city here. They're going to build on three city blocks, and that will then encourage many other investors who are currently sitting on the sideline to come into the city. But this week, GPT announced it was walking away. After spending three years and $100 million trying to get the project up, GPT is frustrated at what it sees as a lack of firm support from the New South Wales government. We uh, really wanted to see uh, a commitment by the state government to invest in Newcastle uh, and uh, unfortunately uh, we just couldn't wait any longer for that commitment. We've been waiting uh, quite, a, quite a period of time. The announcement was a hammer blow for Newcastle as was the accompanying news that David Jones would also close its store in the city as a direct result of the scrapping of GPT's redevelopment plans. 
It's absolutely ripped the heart out of the city. I think you'll see through the traders that are here, they're very devastated to think that there'll probably be a 30 to 40 percent drop off on footpath traffic and business through the area. So therefore, you would say the place is devastated. In fact, this week, Labor's political opponents were quick to lay the blame for the debacle at the feet of the state government. But according to the Labor member for Newcastle and Minister for the Hunter, Jodie McKay, she had only last week laid out to GPT a bold plan to replace the city's heavy rail line with a light rail system. We did reach decision last week, and keeping in mind that this development would be three to four years before it was uh, uh, up and operating, a decision was uh, conveyed to GPT last week. Five days later, they pull out. It's intriguing. Why did the developer pull out? Well, on Tuesday, the minister herself admitted that the government had kept the company waiting. I think the government did take too long. I think that there have been, uh, certainly uh, the government has a role to play in terms of taking partial responsibility for this. I, I agree with that. And I think that the people of Newcastle have a right to be angry. I have spoken uh, many times about my frustration with the length of time that this has taken. I understand the minister's frustration uh, here. It's the frustration that we all share. Really, Premier? Well, no, not really. On Wednesday, Jody McKay's frustration with her own government had been completely spun in the opposite direction by her leader. Now the frustration was all directed at the developer. We had a meeting booked in with GPT for the 31st of August and they were told what we would do at that meeting. They were told that we would outline our plan for Newcastle and at the time, at the time, it's my understanding they were very pleased about it. Now something happened between that phone call between the minister and the CEO and when the CEO went to meet with his board. I think if there is an explanation that needs to be provided to the people of Newcastle, the first place I would go to is to GPT. Well, Stateline went to GPT and asked and we were told the company doesn't want to get into a slanging match with the government. But it seems the developer's patience had been wearing thin. GPT has told Stateline that it had been waiting since March for the government to deliver a promised scoping study into the removal of Newcastle's heavy rail line. Instead, it found out a week ago that the rail line was going to stay for the foreseeable future. This statement released by the Premier this week makes the government's position clear when it states there must be a rail service for Newcastle's CBD and that it expected GPT's redevelopment to go ahead while the city retained its existing heavy rail line. So given that GPT's mega million dollar project was always conditional on the removal of Newcastle's rail line, was the company well within its rights to feel like it had been dudded by the Keneally government? Well, at the end of the day, talk of replacing the city's heavy rail with a light rail line has been essentially just that, talk. According to GPT, the Keneally government was offering no guarantees that it would ever eventuate when Jodie McKay made that fateful phone call last week. A spokesperson for GPT has told Stateline that... Jodie McKay rang the CEO and said the government was now looking into light rail as a path to follow. A path, perhaps, but in GPT's view, it was barely the kernel of a plan. So much so that this week, government MPs in Newcastle's surrounding electorates were telling the media it was the first they'd heard anything about it. In fact, in GPT's view... If the state government had made a decision, it should have communicated that to the Newcastle community. In other words, it wanted a commitment from the Keneally government, and that commitment simply wasn't forthcoming. Ultimately, for Newcastle, that meant the train had already left the station.